Hey everyone, I'm Neil, welcome to the workshop. This is the camera that I film most of my content on, it's the Canon 600D, and for the price point, I'm really pleased with it. Given this is a new YouTube channel, and I'm still very much working out what I'm doing, I'm not really in a position to sink a large amount of money into expensive lenses with image stabilisation. I have, however, noticed that the way I hold this camera makes it very difficult for me to get smooth moving shots, and I'd like to be able to add some motion to make my videos more interesting. There are so many options out there for camera stabilisers, either professional products going for hundreds of pounds or DIY solutions from PVC pipe. I decided to make my own to try and stop my shots looking like I'm permanently in an earthquake. The first thing to do is to measure the camera and then to work out the overall spacing for the handles. This is one of the major benefits of building my own. I can tailor this specifically to what's comfortable for me. Now that I have that dimension, it's on to cutting down some steel bar stock to make my top and bottom rails. I've chosen to use 14mm by 5mm for these, as I want it to have some rigidity, and I figure adding weight to the rig will only help with smoothness. I then used a small file to clean up the ends of these pieces of bar, so as to make them smooth and hand-friendly. And then it was over to the lathe, where I had a piece of wood mounted between centres and with the centre point marked out. You can see me here using a pencil to mark out key points on the handles to ensure they match each other as best as possible, and then using a square carbide tool to reduce the diameter of the piece of wood to the right size for my hands. Again, an opportunity to tailor it to me. A set of vernier calipers makes this process a lot easier. Whilst you could absolutely make this with just some round dowels as handles, I wanted to take the opportunity to add shape to these handles so as to make them comfier to hold but also provide better grip. It's obviously very important that these handles are smooth and pleasant to hold, so I went over them with a range of sandpapers, starting at 80 grit and working my way up to 600. I'm not going to bore you by showing you all of that process. So let's skip on to spraying a coat of finish. In this case, I'm using a simple clear coat as I don't want to change the colour too much. And then it's time for it to become two handed I'm using a Japanese pull saw to cut down the centre mark. So here are the four pieces I've made so far. Hopefully you can see from this how it's meant to go together. Up until this point, the project had been going fairly smoothly. I decided I wanted to recess the bars into the handles and then cap them so as to give a cleaner finish. So I wrapped the first one in a rag and clamped it in my vise. I used a scribe to mark the centre and then having drilled a hole in the end of each bar, drew round the bar stock. I then decided to remove the area for the bar to sit in with a chisel. As soon as I hit the chisel for the first cut, the whole piece started moving in the vise, so I had to stop and reclamp it with something underneath to support it. Having dealt with that, cuts 2 and 3 went absolutely fine. Cut 4, however, being across the grain, split the end of the handle. I should have known it would do this, and to be honest I'm not quite sure if I just wasn't thinking or if I was overconfident because everything had gone so smoothly. Fortunately, some CA glue and a clamp could solve it. I decided at this point that using a Forstner bit to remove the bulk of the material was probably a safer bet. I then used the carving bit on my Dremel to square up and tidy up the recesses. So as you can see here, the bar stock ended up fitting into the ends of the handles as I had planned, and the handle blew up was good, so no one needs to know, except all of you. The next thing to do was to turn some end caps to cover up the bar on the handles. I've got a leftover piece of oak chucked in the lathe, as I think that makes a nice pairing with the handle. I'm adding a tenon to the end and making sure that the wood is centred before parting off a piece to use. With the new piece chucked up, 
I can use the vernier calipers again to mark out the diameter I need, and then I can turn the caps. Sanding these on the lathe is the easiest option before parting them off. Oh, and remember to actually lock the banjo in place. Here you can see me marking the holes onto the handles so that I know where to drill holes ready for screws. When driving those screws in, it's important to make sure your workpiece doesn't spin round and hit your tripod which you would think I would have learned by the second time around. I then needed to mark up the caps and create a small recess for the screw heads. A bit of sharpie worked perfectly for this. I'm using a 5 minute two part epoxy to attach the caps, being careful not to have too much squeeze out. And then a simple clamp to hold them in place until it sets. So that's the bulk of the build done. In theory it's now functional, but I wanted to have the ability to put it down whilst the camera is mounted in it. So whilst the epoxy dries, it's time to make some simple feet. To make these I'm using some 12mm by 3mm bar stock and a hammer. I initially tried to bend them both together, but that wasn't working too well, so I ended up doing them one at a time. A bit of filing to round off those sharp edges and remove the burrs, and then a coat of black spray paint for aesthetics, and they're done. So there you have it, that's my stabiliser built. There are people who will comment that it doesn't have a gimbal, and it would be smoother if it was a gimbal, and I completely agree with that. But the reality is, I've probably spent less than about £15 on this. You know, the metal bar stock is a couple of pounds, the wood I happen to have lying around, but even if I'd had to buy it, wouldn't be more than 5 or £6. I've included here a few shots that I've taken using it. It'll obviously take some getting used to, but I'm already noticing a massive improvement in the steadiness of my moving shots. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got something from it and perhaps are inspired to try and make your own kit. I try and release a new video every Friday, so please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You can also find me over on Instagram at nmb_woodworks. Thanks again for watching. See you next week.